Hello and welcome back to the Lobo Designs channel. This is Heather Lynn, owner of Lobo Designs, and I'm here today with an Adobe Illustrator tutorial showing you how to take a raster image, turn it into an offset design, also show you how to change it into a reverse engrave, and then I'll walk through the basics of how I create these projects on my laser and turn it into this final project over here on the right side. So if you're ready, I'm ready to dive in. Let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to place the image from your Procreate export onto your artboard. This does not need to be from Procreate. You can use anything that you want for this part of the design. I am personally going to be using uh, the letter H that I hand lettered in Procreate for iPad, and I'm going to be importing it as a transparent background PNG. I will then image trace it and we'll go from there. So first things first, place that image. So Command Shift P as in place or Control Shift P if you're on Windows. You're going to bring up this menu. You're gonna to wanna to go into the folder that you have that artwork in. Mine is right here. I'm gonna choose place over here. And I'm going to click anywhere on my artboard to place this image. I personally always click up here at the top left just so that it places in the center of my screen. And we're going to trace from here. So over here in the trace panel, you're going to make sure that you still have this selected. You're going to hit trace. Up at the top here, we're gonna to go to object expand make sure that your window looks like mine and click ok last thing that you need to do for the trace is you need to remove the negative space so you're going to activate the magic wand tool by hitting y on your keyboard or you can go over here to the magic wand tool just a reminder if you can't see any tools over here they're probably hidden in your edit toolbar button down here so again magic wand tool y on your keyboard you're going to click anywhere in the white space and you're going to hit delete on your keyboard now this is ready as a vector so if you can see i'm going to switch over into outline mode by hitting command y or control y and you can see it outlined the h and everything else is gone so this is ready to be worked with back into preview mode and now we can size this down create our offsets and create the second reverse and grade design from here so i am going to shrink this down to a two inch height so I'm taking this, I am going over here into the properties tab. If you can't see any of the windows that I'm using, you can always go into window menu up at the top and you can make sure that it's checked off. So for the Pathfinder menu I have over here on the left, that one's here. Properties is on the right, image trace is on the left, align is also on the left over here. You control these, you can also drag these around and you can stack them inside each other all customizable but over here in the properties menu is where we're going to be changing the height of this and i am going to make sure that i have this box checked off so that the proportions stay the same and i'm going to make sure that the height is two inches so that shrunk that all the way down and now that that's resized we can do our offset so i'm going to select this h with the selection tool which is v as in victor on your keyboard you can also hit this little arrow up here at the top to activate your selection tool. Now that this is activated, I am going to make a copy of it first. So I am going to hit Command C as in copy. You can hit Control C if you have Windows. Now I have a hard copy of that. The reason I do that is because I do an offset a little bit differently than others, and I'm gonna show you how. So I'm gonna go up here into the object menu. I'm going to hit Path, Offset Path, and these are the settings that I'm going to be using for this. I will get rid of this little notch because I don't like having that in my offsets, but I'll do that as a part of my offset process. So right now I have my offset set at 0.25 inches. My joins are rounded. If I did those at miter and you had any sharp edges, these would turn into points. So I personally keep this at round. You can also change it to bevel, all a personal preference. I don't change this because I'm using rounds and not miters. I'm going to leave preview on so that I can see what this looks like. Now that I like the look of it, I'm going to click OK. Now we have our offset. I am going to do a complete weld of this entire design. So right now what's selected is the offset. I'm going to draw a box around this and make sure I have everything selected, including that little H in the middle. I'm going to go over here into Pathfinder and I'm going to hit Unite. I'm then going to release the compound path, which you can either do over here under your quick actions or you can right click and do release compound path. When that's released, that closes off this little box and then I'm going to hit unite one more time. So that was unite, release, unite. And now that I have this outline, shift X, 
We'll change that to my outline. You can also do this little arrow right here, which is swapping your fill and your stroke. All I did was change that from a black fill to a black stroke. You can change it back doing the same thing, Shift X. So I want this to be a red stroke. I'm gonna change my stroke color over here in appearance. Red stroke. And do you remember that copy that we made of the black H that we hand lettered? We're gonna bring that back here. So I'm going to hit Command F as in front and bring that back. So now we have the perfectly centered H with the offset path around it, and this is ready to be laser cut. I do make some edits here. For this one, I'm going to be making it into a keychain, so I'm gonna add a little hole for the keychain thingy up top so that I don't have to deal with any hardware. I'm just gonna snap one of those keychain thingies on there, but I do need to add that hole there, and when I am working with frosted acrylic or clear acrylic, which I will be for this project, I mirror my design. So what I do is I reverse the entire design and I'll do this at the end, but what I'm talking about is I flip it. So what I do is I reverse the design, and then when I engrave this, I will engrave this on the matte side of the frosted acrylic. That way you get the crisp color of the engrave through the glossy side of the acrylic, and it looks super clean, just like it did in that first picture. I don't know if you noticed that, but there was no paint involved with that. That was just a simple engrave on frosted green glass acrylic, my favorite. So I'm gonna undo this right now because we have a couple more changes to make, and then we're gonna make the second design, which is this exact design, but a reverse engrave of it, which sometimes they call a knockout. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to select this entire design, and I'm going to make a duplicate copy of it. So click with your mouse, make sure you have it selected, and then you'll do shift and option at the same time on your keyboard. So click, shift, option, and then if you drag to the right, it'll create a duplicate copy, and you'll stay directly on that same alignment so you don't have to worry about anything getting out of place. Now that we have this separate copy, what I personally do is just to do a reverse engrave, we swap it. So I'm gonna take this whole design, I'm gonna go over here into the Pathfinder menu. I'm gonna hit minus front. And what that does is it changes this entire thing to a cut path. So if you switch over into outline mode, what you'll see here is this, they both basically look exactly the same, but if you come back into preview mode, you'll see that this one actually has a fill because this is its own object, whereas this one is just a compound shape. So to change this to a reverse engrave is pretty simple. You would select this, you're gonna use the eyedropper tool, which is I on your keyboard, or it is the little eyedropper over here in your menu. Once you have that selected, I'm gonna change this to a black fill because I want this to be engraveable. So we're gonna do black fill by just clicking once on this H. That will turn this over here into a solid black design. I'm hitting V on my keyboard to switch to the selection tool. So now we have this path, which is now your engraved path, which is the fill that you'll set in Lightburn. And then all we need to do is we need to create the cut path for this side. But before I do that, I wanna create the holes that we're going to use to attach the keychain thingies. So I'm going to create two circles on my artboard. And the way I do that is by using the ellipse tool. So you can activate the ellipse tool by hitting L on your keyboard or using the ellipse tool button over here. This tool sometimes likes to hide. So if you don't see it, you can right click on this tool over here if you see the rectangle tool, the polygon tool, the star tool, or the line segment tool, that means that that's the one that will show over here. So whichever one of these you see over here, just right click on it and then you can select the ellipse tool. Or like I said, all of these letters on the right side are your hotkeys. So you can just hit L on your keyboard, which I find to be the easiest. You're gonna click once anywhere on your artboard to create two separate holes for the keychain thingy tab that we're adding. So the first one I create is 0.42. You wanna make sure that this is locked so that you're maintaining your proportions and making a perfect circle. I'm gonna click OK there. And then while I have that activated, I'm gonna go over here and I'm just gonna change this to a red stroke. And then I'm going to do one more circle. So clicking once more and I'm hitting 0.2 for this one. Again, it'll fill the height in for 0.2 as long as you have that locked. Click OK once more. Back to the selection tool, hit V on your keyboard. You're gonna select both of these circles together, go up into your align panel over here, and we are going to align these horizontally and vertically so that they are centered. And then again, they're still selected, we're gonna do another knockout. So we're gonna go over here into minus front on the Pathfinder tool and click minus front. So now we have this little tab that I'm gonna zoom in and line up so that I can weld it to this shape. So I'm holding down Option or Alt if you're a Windows user and you can scroll in, uh, zoom in with your mouse button. Um, if you have a scroll button or if you have a smart mouse, you just scroll in 
and we are going to place this. The way that I do this is always in outline mode just because I don't like seeing that stroke. So I'm gonna switch over to outline mode by hitting Command Y and I'm gonna zoom all the way in. So again, I'm holding down Option and just scrolling in with my mouse and I'm gonna use the selection tool that I already have highlighted. I'm just gonna drag this down to right there. Looks a little funky, but we're gonna weld this together, remember. So now that I have this in place, I'm gonna select this outline. I'm gonna hold down Shift on my keyboard and also select this circle that we just created up here. And then our friend, the Pathfinder panel over here again, we're gonna hit Unite. So once here, we're gonna unite that all together. Now you can zoom back out, hold down Option or Alt, again with your scroll button on your mouse. You can also do Command or Control Plus and Command or Control Minus to zoom in and out. And I'm gonna switch back to Preview Mode, Command Y. And now you'll see that we have this red outline and we just need to get a copy of it over here. So the way that I do that is the same way that we duplicated this earlier. So I'm just gonna select this outline here with my selection tool, holding down Shift Option, again, Shift Alt if you're Windows, and I'm just dragging this over until it's centered. And if you see here, once it's centered, you'll see intersect in the middle. See how it's written in pink? You may not be able to see it, it's very small. But once it's in place, it'll tell you that, and then you can release. So now we have this design which is your reverse engrave. We have this design, which is just your basic offset. And the last step is we just have to flip them. So we're gonna mirror this over here in your transform panel. Up at the top over here, you're gonna pick this button here and we're just gonna flip horizontally. And that's ready to go. So we can hop over into Lightburn. The way that I bring everything over into Lightburn usually, unless we're talking about images, is I just copy and paste it. So I'm gonna highlight this. Command C or Control C. I'm gonna hop over into Lightburn. I already have a copy here, so I'm just gonna delete that and show you that when you paste it in, it comes in just the same. So I'm gonna, that was Command V, V as in Victor, and I'm gonna make sure I have all this selected. I'm just gonna bring it down here a little bit so I can see it, and just so I can show you what I then do in Lightburn. If you are an Adobe Illustrator user, you always want to make sure that your Lightburn preferences are set accordingly. So up in Lightburn, up here at the top, Click Preferences. You're going to go into File Settings right here on the left. And you always wanna make sure that you have your SVG import settings set to 72 DPI for Illustrator. The default is 96. This will resize your designs if you're designing an Illustrator and then importing to Lightburn. So you wanna make sure you have that set first. Now that that's set, we know that this will be sized properly and this is ready to go. So what I do for my settings here is I used for the engrave, which is the fill, up here in the top, I'll open this up so you can see it. My engrave settings are 400 speed, 40 power, and I turn my air assist off. Air assist will always leave enough air on to protect your optics when you turn it off, but it will reduce the amount of dust that blows around inside your engrave if you turn that off while you're engraving. Reminder, please don't ever turn this off when you're cutting. Um, fire. <laughs> I'll just say fire, keep saying fire. Never turn this off when you're cutting. But when you're engraving, you can absolutely turn this off if you choose to. I'm using a 400 LPI. Right now I'm in millimeters, so it looks a little funky. Um, you'll also notice in Lightburn, if you add something as say 300 and then you switch from inches to millimeters and then back again, it'll swap it down to like 299, 97. Um, it's not a huge difference. It's just the mathematical equation between millimeters and inches when it switches back and forth. Uh, for engraves, I also defocus, which is this Z offset field. Make sure you're set to millimeters up here and you have this set to negative two if you're defocusing. I use negative two, some people use negative four, some people use negative 10, entirely up to you. Don't go too far, it will be completely out of focus and again, you'll have another fire. So we are good on here and you don't need to follow my settings. You can use your own, I'm just showing you what I use. And then my cut settings for acrylic is always low and slow. So my normal 1 8 cutting speed and power is 3060. For acrylic, 1 8 inch, I always use 1040. Sometimes I can do 1030, honestly. Um, but low and slow for acrylic, air assist on. That will reduce the chatter or the lines that you get on the side of acrylic when you're cutting because I don't know if you know this, but acrylic actually liquefies when you're cutting it. So if you don't leave the beam in place for long enough for it to solidify into that polished state, you'll get what we call chatter, which are little striation lines all around the edge. And if you get that, all you need to do is slow it down 
and lower your power sometimes. So we have all of this set. Again, nosy offset for my cut. Air assist is on for my cut. And now that this is all set, we click OK. Your next step, since we are using the Z offset and we are defocusing through light burn, is you wanna make sure that you have those settings enabled. So you go up into your device settings, which are up here, the little wrench. You're gonna open this up and what you're looking for over here in the top is your Z axis control and you wanna make sure that you have the green switch on for enable Z axis. And that will allow you to use the Z offset in your settings, which is what I showed you a little bit ago. So you just click OK here. I make sure that my engrave is set first. I make sure that my cut is set for second. So fill first, line second. And then I'm personally originating here. And my shortcut is when I send it over to the machine, I hit shift on my keyboard when I'm hitting send. So that way the machine starts right away. If you are a laser user and you are not familiar with that setting, do not do it because you need to make sure that you are in focus. You need to make sure that your origin is set. You need to make sure that everything is ready on your bed before you do that or else everything will go crazy as soon as you hit shift send. If you're doing it the other way, you would hit send. You'll send it over to your machine. Mine's gonna fail right now. That's a terrible noise. Mine's gonna fail just because my machine is not on. So when I, when that happens, it either can't communicate with your machine or your machine's off. So if your machine is on when that happens, you can hit escape on your keypad and the keypad on your laser. <laughs> and then you can come back here and revisit that and it should work. If not, email your support team and they will be able to help you. So again, this is how I set everything up. A little bit long-winded. Sorry that I kept you here for so long, but that concludes this tutorial. If you have any questions, as always, please feel free to message me. I am always here and I am always willing to help. Also, feel free to join us in the Glow Create group on Facebook for additional tips and tricks on how to use Procreate and Adobe Illustrator beyond the screen to turn your digital artwork into physical products. If you enjoyed this video and would like to be notified of future tutorials, please hit the like button and subscribe below. Until next time, this is Heather Lynn of Lobo Design signing off. I will holla at you later.